Oh, I have to take my glasses off. Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK and I'm here today at Braxton Gardens in a lovely cafe called Muffins Galore where I'm putting on, I can finally tell you what the surprise is, <laughs> I'm putting on a mother blessing or a baby shower for my dear friend Charlotte. Um, as you can see I've done some nice, I've got some little decorations and we're going to have a lovely afternoon tea. Um, I've got her a little bag of goodies here, a little hamper ready for the birth and immediately after the baby's born. Um, so, it, her, her mum, her sister and another really good friend of hers are coming. They should be here in the next 10 minutes. Then I'm going to go and get her. Uh, she has no idea. She knows that I'm picking her up and I'm taking her somewhere but she knows absolutely nothing. So, Charlotte, if you're watching this after the fact, sorry! <laughs> Hello. You as well. <laughs> Hi. Let's try not to cry now. Sorry, you've got any makeup on. You monkeys. Like, how? What are you doing? Have you not realised that no one's been talking to you for a couple of weeks? <laughs> Or, or talking to you very minimally. <laughs> Normal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can go married to the couple of weeks. Yeah, but you just give it away. <laughs>
My children to obey me. Upstairs, one, two. Oh, Sunny it's Oh, I've got to go back to the other two trays. Again. Okay. So, are we sitting comfortably? Yes, we're sitting comfortably. Circle round, close your eyes, and imagine it is late at night on Halloween and you are very excited. All evening long, you've been out, dressed up in costumes, collecting candy and apples and other treats from the houses in your neighbourhood. Now you are quiet. It is time to go to sleep, but you can feel magic in the air. Do we have to go to sleep, you say? Tonight is a night for magic dreams, say the old ones. Set out an apple for Grandfather Deer and maybe he will take you someplace. You choose your best apple and set it out on the windowsill for Grandfather Deer and then you lie down and close your eyes. Now the room is filled with an earthy animal smell. Open your eyes and before you stands the glowing spirit of Grandfather Deer, the oldest and wisest stag in the forest. With many branching antlers, he wears proudly on his head. Hop on my back and I will take you someplace, he says. You climb on his back and hold tight to his antlers. He moves so swiftly and smoothly you feel like you're flying. Out of the house, over the tops of the trees, out past the streets and the cars, out into the spirit world of swirling colour. At last you come to a sandy beach by the shore of a dark ocean. You're not afraid, even though you can't see much in the dark. Get down off my back, Grandfather Deer says. I cannot take you any further. Now you must go on by boat. You slide down off Grandfather Deer's back and thank him. A boat glides across the water and you hear the crunch of sand under the keel as it reaches the beach. Do you wish to ride in my boat, says a voice. You can't see anyone, but you know the voice is magic because it sounds different to everyone who hears it. Some hear a woman's voice, some hear a man's, some hear a child or an animal or a bird. What do you hear? Do you wish to visit the shining isle across the sunless sea, the voice says. Yes, you say. Then you must pay me something. But I don't have any money. I'm only a child, you say, and you left all your candy at home. I like stories better than money or candy, says the voice. Tell me a story about something you have done that was hard for you to do. What story would you tell? Climb into the boat, the voice says. Look, you climb aboard and the boat slips away from the shore. It moves silently across the dark water. In the distance, something shines. Slowly it grows bigger and brighter. You begin to smell something very sweet on the air. Something that reminds you of your favourite fruit and your favourite flowers. Now you can see the shining thing is an island in the distance. It grows bigger as you approach. On the shore are beautiful trees and flowers that shine with a light of their own. Who lives on that island, you ask? The beloved dead and the unborn, says the voice. Am I dead, you ask? No. Tonight is Halloween, the only night of the year when the living can visit this island. The boat reaches the shore and the sand scrapes under its keel. Thank you, thank you, you say, jumping off and wading through shallow water to the shore. You step up, step up into a shore of a magic land. Oh, what is the unborn? Babies who haven't been born yet. So when, well, babies aren't born on the island with the dead. That's what the story's saying, yeah. It's just yeah. a story, remember? Shore of a magic land that looks different to every person who comes here. You see the most beautiful place you can imagine, just the sort of place you like best whether it's a valley or mountains or a beautiful garden or a beach or a warm house. Someone is there to greet you, an ancestor, someone who loves you very much. Who is it? Is it someone you know and miss and remember, or someone you have never met before? Or is it someone you have met in a dream? It's Teddy. Aww. You play for a long time, and at last, when you get hungry and thirsty and tired, an old, old woman appears. She is so old, her face is... <laughs> Her face is covered with wrinkles. I just realised after you saying that, you were like, <laughs> you're like, I can see all the lines. <laughs> but her eyes are so bright, they glow like two big moons. That's appropriate too. You're my mother. <laughs> at her feet, is, this probably isn't, at her feet is a big round iron pot, a cauldron, and she is stirring something in it with a big wooden spoon around and around and around. You go close to the cauldron and look inside. At first it seems dark, but then you notice thousands of tiny glowing lights like little stars. Around and around and around they swirl until you get a little dizzy from watching them. Those are the souls of the dead, the old woman says, but they are also the souls of the unborn. In my cauldron I brew them back into life. Would you like to taste my brew? She holds out her spoon and puts a drop of her brew on your tongue. It tastes like the best thing in the world you can imagine. Just one drop is enough to leave you perfectly satisfied. 
you look into her eyes again and realise that she is the goddess. Remember this taste, she tells you. Whenever you are afraid or have to do something hard, it will give you strength and courage. But now it is time to go. Sadly, you say goodbye to the goddess, to your ancestor and to everyone you have met here on the Shining Isle. You walk slowly back to the shore. A whole year will pass again before you can visit again. But you will remember your ancestor and maybe in your dreams you will meet again. At the shore, the boat waits for you. You step inside and feel the scraping of the keel on the sand as it pushes across the dark waters of the sunless sea. On the opposite shore, Grandfather Deer awaits. You smell his warm animal smell and the rich smell of moist earth. Now the boat reaches the shore again, and you thank the magic person who has guided the boat for you. You jump out, splashing through the shallow water, and hop onto Grandfather Deer's back. Again you fly through the swirling colours of the spirit world, back over the treetops and the streets, to your own house again. You thank Grandfather Deer as you slide down from his back, and feed him his special apple. Then you curl up to sleep, warm and safe, in your own bed. Um, so we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have to fill up much. I just filled up a lot. So Hello. Um, I, I was, I had something else planned for today, and then I kind of thought, actually, you know what? I just want to address the new announcement from the government that we are now going into another lockdown for four weeks or a month. Um, as of as of Thursday. Oh, the kids had just kind of got back into our new-ish routine of going to forest school again, um, going to ballet again and getting, and, and Bessie was really trying hard to join in and she was planning that she would be putting on, you know, her uniform this time and she would be trying to dance just a little bit in the hall this time and that was and it was such an amazing step forward and I feel like we've just gone 10 steps back. Taekwondo, Charles was getting really, really confident again, and I was starting to see him practice his pattern and thinking, oh, he's going to be able to take his belt um, at the next grading. Like, I reckon he's ready. You know, just he just needs a little bit more practice. And, you know, swimming was going really, really well. Again, they were just starting to relax and start actually swimming properly rather than just kind of getting all this worry and wanting to just play. Um, they were just starting to do all of that again and I'm just devastated for the kids like obviously it's the right decision I think I think it's the right decision that we have a lockdown again um, but we can't keep having lockdowns can we like the government can't keep doing it um, because we can't afford it as a country um, financially we're not affected as much um, Phil works in the funeral industry so um, he's still at work unfortunately kind of um it's a weird industry to be in <laughs> we're obviously happy that he has work but then it's really sad that there's more people dying so um yeah but he also has a second job at a bar which it's still i imagine he's going to be furloughed again so um obviously my personal life doesn't change very much and if they continue going to forest school then um it won't be too bad because i'll still get that um that break for one day a week which is nice um i usually use it to edit my videos to give to you guys so um hopefully i'll still have that if not i'll just have to work around it like i did when they weren't going so um i just wanted to know how you guys were getting on um how are you feeling about having another lockdown if you're here in the uk um I know it's kind of like we've got this and America, my American views, you guys have the election. So, you know, it's all kind of busy and all over the place everywhere in the world right now, isn't it? it just, <sighs> um, I'm feeling really stressed about it and I keep getting upset. I think I keep getting upset because of the progress the kids have made and now they're going backwards again. Um, I don't know if you guys feel like that as well. I feel like as home educators, it's not a huge big deal because we're not suddenly being plunged into something we didn't sign up for um whereas a lot of the people last time with the school closures they did not sign up to home educate their children and then they were home educating their children <laughs> and, um, and obviously we didn't feel like that and lots of you joined us at the beginning of that lockdown so obviously the schools are staying open this time so i doubt many of you will join us this time but if you're a new home educator, um, this is not what it's supposed to be like. <laughs> we're supposed to be able to have meetups and we're supposed to be able to have clubs and we're supposed to be able to have playdates whenever the hell we like because we don't have to adhere to a timetable. And it's it really sucks. It really does. I miss my 
I miss my friends who have children, who are the friends of my children. I miss those women. Um, I miss chatting to them while our children play and I, I miss going to looking around my friend Louise's garden and I miss chatting on the sofa with my friend Mel and going for walks with my friend Hannah and, and I miss these things. Um, I miss their lovely children um, and my children miss their children and it's really just really rubbish. Um, I don't know how everyone else is coping with that. I think my children aren't too worried. I think being autistic they like to socialise on their own terms. They are very sociable people but on their own terms and they're kind of okay going for a few weeks without seeing people um, and just chatting on um, chatting on video chat and things like that and I think that's definitely going to be happening more. I'm going to try and encourage them to have video chats with their friends um, especially their very very best friends and um, same with family try and have video chats and wave at each other through windows and you know whatever um i also just side note i just wanted to apologize for the second week of not getting a thursday video out i'm gonna try really really hard to get that out for you on thursday um and hopefully i'm gonna film this film it right after this one and get it edited and everything so i will be ahead of myself this week um i don't think this is going to be a hugely long video just because it's mainly just a little vlog and just to check in to make sure everyone is okay. Um, I I feel like nothing's really going to change from an actual home education point of view for us. Um, we're still going to be doing our home ed in the morning and we're still going to be playing in the afternoon. Um, and obviously we'll still be going to see our horses and we'll still be walking our dogs. So we will just carry on like we did before. Um, but yeah. I know that those of you who um, are my lovely viewers who are single parents, I know that this is going to be trying for you and it's going to be challenging and I want you to know that I'm here for you. So if you need to message me at 8pm or 9pm or 10pm or 11pm, whatever time or any time of the day, um, then please do. I'm here for you. I want to listen to you. I want to be um, a support system, part of your support system. Um, obviously, um, we can't see each other in real life if we know each other in real life, but um, I'm here and I want to be around. So I'm going to end this video here because I'm going to cry <laughs> and I will see you on Thursday where we're going to be doing something a little different and I hope you enjoy it so um the only thing actually I'm just remembering the only thing I want to do before I say goodbye is show you this which is the winner of our twinkle giveaway because I forgot to do it last week so this is the footage of me putting the names of the entrants into a name spinny giveaway, what do you call it? Random name generator thing. And um, and I, just, I recorded me doing it so you can see. And um, the winner, your name has been uh, passed on to Alistair at Twinkle and he is very excitedly going to send you your code so you can get your subscription. Um, I'm really excited for you, well done. And I'm not going to say who it is, I'm going to wait you see it, I'm going to let you see, you ready? um home education in lockdown again vlog and um i will see you on thursday don't forget to leave me a comment let me know how you're doing and to subscribe if you haven't already we're going to be having some more lifestyle and mum content coming up soon um as well as our weekly home ed videos so i'm excited to share that with you you can check me out on Channel Mum. I am there now. How exciting. Um, and we're going to be doing some more stuff with them next month. So, see you later. Stay safe.